Let me say at the outset here, forgive me, Lord, for I know not what I do. Toto is a really, really nice guy. But sometimes, more than often, nice guys finish last. And I've listen, I've got to talk to you today. I've had enough. I've had a hard day and this thing's bothering me now. I'm going to go off hard. Scorched Earth Cameron incoming because I need to rant about it. Look, Toto Wolf is an absolute business mind genius levels above each and every single one like he's he's proper he's a great guy he is that guy look at the things that he's done with mercedes you guys know the facts and the stats that he's doubled no quadrupled the advertising value of mercedes over the course of his tenure props sir but what are we doing now you guys are well aware steve a the f1 is a what have you done for me lately so I want to try and understand the gap analysis between then, the glory days of Mercedes, and now why are we here and why am I so upset with what Toto Wolf is talking to? Let's get let's get at it. Because there's so many different strands, there's so many different ways at which we need to approach this. Let me rewind to 2021. The God tier championship, one of the best championships that I've ever seen in my life. One Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lewis Carl Davidson Hamilton, by the way, to be clear, versus one Max Verstappen. One is black from Stevenage, the UK. One is white from the Netherlands. You can't even write this sort of friction. The stakes were incredible. Once one in generation type drivers, both of them are. I mean, how can you write that? If you wrote it in a book, they wouldn't believe you. They would say it's a stuff of fairy tales. You can't make that up. And listen, on a regular, I go back and watch that season because it was incredible. It had everything that you need as far as the ingredients for a top tier upper echelon season. But here's where we need to look at Toto Wolf, the first one, Exhibit A. Because again, lots of people will say that, well, you know what, Toto's Toto's inherited all of this from one Ross Braun, didn't he? That Mercedes isn't the house that Toto built. And I, I can't go there with that. I think Toto's brought value. I think that's almost indisputable at this point. And anybody who says it is, is barking up the fool's gold, gold tree. I just can't get down with that. Toto Wolf is absolutely worthy of some praise. And for table setting, I need to put that up front, right? Preface everything that I'm about to say. This diatribe incoming with that give that dude his flowers absolutely worthy of credit if not just from a business perspective mercedes f1 isn't what it is today in 2024 sons one toto wolf but let's rewind back to 2021 because here's where it gets a bit techy remember eight time constructors at this point six time drivers courtesy of lewis hamilton one courtesy of Nico Rosberg they've been dominating F1 good and proper they have there's no other way to cut it but then we rewind to 2021 and here's where it gets a bit techy because decision making listen a lot of people say that F1 is about people I think but I would differ ever so slightly I think F1 is about decision making sound rational minded decision making that's how you elevate to the top and that's how you have success ultimately endured success in f1 cool let's rewind back to 2021 keep that front and center of your mind yeah decision making people and decision making moreover 2021 max verstappen and, and lewis hamilton are going at it hammering tongue it's close it's techie it's one of those ones where it was, of course, ultimately deci de decided even on fine margins. Of course it was. Break magic. We can talk to that. We can talk about Imola. We can talk about Hungary. There were loads of incidents and it was so close that it was always going to be decided on fine margins. Toto Wolf et al. made the decision together with Elliot, together with James Allison, but the, what, what were they going to do as far as development of that car in a season that's so bloody close? Surely... It makes sense to put all your eggs in a 2021 championship basket. My old my old lady, Mama Cameron, she would always say to me, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Focus on the here and now sometimes. Now I know the regulations were changing. And if you nail the 2022 car, then you get endure, enduring durable competitive advantage as have done Red Bull. Take that. I get it. However, 
if in the circumstance that you're in a neck a neck battle if it's fine margins with one Max Verstappen in an Adrian Newey designed Red Bull then how about we focus on that in the real time how about we focus on getting that championship done in 2021 you didn't have enough margin in your pocket Toto Mike Elliott James Allison to go and focus on the 2022 car we were moving as if this was 2018 and we had durable competitive advantage to spare. That's not what it was. This was this was fine margins now and it was always going to be decided on temps. Ultimately, it came down to Michael Massey, Abu Dhabi. We all know the, the polemic that was Abu Dhabi. But listen, opportunity cost of cash, right? Slide indoors. If Mercedes had focused on that car in real time in 2021, who's to say that Lewis wouldn't have won fair and square. Clear before Abu Dhabi? I don't know. Listen, this is all ifs, buts and maybes. However, what I do know is that Toto Wolf, Mike Elliott et al., James Allison, made the decision to diversify their development portfolio and focus on 2022 when the correct decision, particularly with the benefit of hindsight, and hindsight is always 2020, right? Everybody can be a Monday morning genius and quarterback, but particularly with the benefit of hindsight, how do you not focus on the here and now? The battle is close. You don't have any wiggle room. Focus on what's in front of you, Mercedes and Toto Wolf. Cool, there's your exhibit A. In my humble opinion, made a massive, an error of gargantuan proportions. But cool, we'll chalk that up to the game. Exhibit A. Didn't focus on the 2021 car. But let's see how they did in 2022, eh? Because they put all of their investment resources into that car. Well, you know how that story ends already. 2022 car was an absolute nightmare. Didn't work. Again, super narrow, peaky performance curve. They saw all of this performance in the wind tunnel and the CFD, et al, yada, yada, yada. Where was it? That car only worked one of 365 days when it was a full moon around tracks that were at high altitude for Pete's sake. What are we doing? I mean, Matthew, what what are we doing here? Can I understand the anger towards Toto, but he's one, he's one that brought my set. No. Matthew, you're right and you're very, very generous, sir. You are right. And again, that's why I prefaced everything that I'm about to say by saying, listen, Toto is absolutely worthy of praise. Of course he is. I've got to give him I've got to give him his flowers and his due props. But look, as we as we mitigate, as we navigate even the story arc, I'm gonna bring it forth into 2024 because lest we forget, F1 is a story about what have you done for me lately. Here's where this is this this rant has been triggered by this. I was at work today. And we were trying to justify some numbers. Ultimately, the numbers were going backwards in the next financial year. And my boss looked at me and he goes, Cam, what are we, what are we talking about? How are we going to go backwards? A, f a company is only as good as its last set of financial statements. You can't talk about what you did three or seven years ago. Nobody cares. Your share price bears no relevance. Your share price today your NPV, your value as a PLC, bears no relevance to what you were doing five years ago. Like it, it's so irrelevant. So why are we sat here talking about former glories with Mercedes? That's why I want to look at what's going on today in the here and now. And I think it's worthy of some criticism. 2022 comes in now. Peaky performance card, it doesn't work. But again, Forgive that, right? Because everybody makes bloody mistakes. Nobody bats a thousand, especially not in a sport as complicated, as techn technologically nuanced as Formula One. Cool, get it, copy. But what do they go and do after that? All 22, that's another season of Lewis Hamilton's career written off. Cool, okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Even Adrian Newey, MP4, 14 was a car that he built that was too dangerous to even drive on track everybody even the goat of aero the chap who did sports car air ground effect in sports cars at university even he makes mistakes cool not gonna get mad at 2022 
But again, you learn from your mistakes, don't you? But no, not Mercedes. What did they do? They won the Brazilian Grand Prix in 22 and thought that that was reason enough to roll forward that bloody no side pod design into 2023. What are we doing? Read any management book and it will tell you what you, what you need to do in those circumstances is fail fast. Everybody makes mistakes, but turn it around very quickly and go in the right direction. Don't continue to bark up the wrong design philosophy tree for Pete's sake. Come on. Lewis Hamilton's career is wasting. Mercedes fans around the world are looking at you just baffled. This to us looks like common sense. So if we can see how comes you can't Toto, Mike, James, like, what are we doing here? And I know it's techie. And I know I'm very firmly in rant territory. Again, I don't want to come and do this every time. But sometimes as you're connecting the dots, you you got to speak. You might, I just don't understand. The mind boggles each and every single time as I try to piece together this story arc. 2023 comes round and they rock up yet again with a flipping zero pod of a car. What, what didn't we learn? What, what the levels of technical arrogance on display here to not learn from the mistakes of the previous year to even roll forward that same design philosophy into 2020 like what I, can't, I just can't you see me out here losing my mind it just doesn't make sense Matthew make it make sense for me how are they how are they in 2023 still rocking up with zero pods and then all of a sudden, now they realise that the first race, okay, so it doesn't work. What? What, you couldn't realise this throughout the winter? You had all that time to assess and try and draw the correlation between the CFD and the wind tunnel and understand that reality doesn't play out, that you've got this narrow, very peaky performance curve and potentially you don't want to keep barking up that design philosophy tree because it's not accessible. It's for gazy, right? You could have a peaky before a, a curve so peaky that it goes ad infinitum. But if you can't access the upper reaches of that performance curve, then what is the point? Absolutely bonkers. OK, so they do that. That's your exhibit B or your exhibit C. I'm losing track at this point. Cool. Parlay into this now as at 2024 Mercedes. Let's let's remember in terms of their life cycle for this set of rules and regulations. They're at square one. This is the car that they should have brought to 2022, right? So everybody's got 48 months on them. 24 months for the time lost by Mercedes and 24 months worth of their own growth and development. So it's no surprise that the car's rubbish, but still you're expecting Mercedes, right? Eight-time constructors, champions, seven-time drivers. They've got Lewis Hamilton and George Russell, one of the best driver pairings on the grid. You expect better from them? Okay, so they rock up this, this time now. And the car is worse than ever. What's the point, Matthew? The car's worse? How is the car worse? I'm still shocked, says Matthew, that James Allison still doesn't know the reason the power unit failed, but saw the rapid loss of... Matthew, I'm telling you, listen, I've had enough. Honestly, genuinely, I'm about to lose my mind. Full skirt, scorched earth, Cameron, incoming. And you're right, Matthew, but I'm going to get to that in short order. So look, Fast forward to this season now, 2024 call. The car's not great. And what we'd be daft at this point to expect any different. 48 months, remember, is the lead time that they're missing as versus the rest. And F1, of course, is a relative game, a zero sum game. There can only be one winner. Success is gauged against your, your protagonists, right? Your rivals. Cool. 48 months behind. So I'm starting to watch now. And again, look, my critique of Toto Wolf has often been that. He doesn't cut. PR is important in F1, right? It, in a world, in a billion dollar sport where brand is really, really critical, where social media is becoming a thing. Drive, drive to survive is very, very important. Millions and millions of F1 fans love and adore Lewis Hamilton, your driver, and watch his every movement. Take the pictures of what, what he's wearing in the paddock and do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's that serious, right? So the way that you move as a team principal accordingly, matters i'll never forget in monza and again i'm, I'm skidding around here but bear with me i'll never forget in monza 2021 only a couple of races after silverstone when one christian horner team principal of red bull went on full onslaught right called lewis hamilton everything under the sun 
inciting all sorts for for this for the incident that happened at Silverstone. All right, cool. Now you can love or hate Christian Horner for that, but I don't hate him. I almost respect him for going hard for his team. I've always said, give me one team principle to be in the in the trenches with each and angles at each and every single time. It's going to be Christian Horner because that dude gets it done. Whatever lines he has to bend or break, he's going to do it. And that's the dude that I want next to me in the trenches. Fast forward to Monza 2021, yeah. So Lewis Hamilton has that accident. Turn one, turn two. Max Verstappen parks his car on Lewis's head. But for a halo, there would have been a serious injury incurred by Sir Lewis, Carl Davidson Hamilton. What does Toto say? Can you imagine if that had been Christian Horner's driver that Lewis Hamilton had parked his his car on top of? Can you you just imagine what Christian Horner would have said, how he would have gone on his demeanour when he got in front of the world press and media. Full onslaught, 100% scorched earth is what we would have got from Christian Horner. And that's why I want him in the trenches next to me. What did Toto Wolf say? Well, listen, it's a racing incident and we'll, uh, we'll abide by whatever the stewards determine. What do you mean, Toto? Like, where do we get the... How are we here? This isn't the time to be passive. This is a championship that's going to be decided on fine margins, sir. So how about you get your elbows out, Toto? Move, action, something. So again, I started to pay attention to Toto Wolf and the way that he was comporting in front of the world's media. And I know that he's a pioneering team principal. I get that. I get that. He's that guy. Again, sound business mind sound racing mind but how is he moving before the pre the world's press and media what messages is he putting forth because it matters because that matters so fast forward to 2024 sh1t car again lewis hamilton's not pleased is he they're trying to be optimistic still. We need to keep working hard. Lewis tries to do the old motivational one-on-one. -on -one. The guys back at the factory are doing so well. We just need to keep pressing. But as of the third race of the season, the car's so bad. And again, the promise was so good in FP2 and FP3. Only for them to be disappointed by a cheeky change in wind and a little bit of an ambient temperature switch. Everything changes. The handling dynamics screw you once again with that W15. Snap over steer becomes understeer in the blink of an eye. How do you drive that car if you're Lewis Hamilton and George Russell? Particularly if you're a 39-year-old Lewis Hamilton. Lest, lest we forget in F1 that you can die in there. Please see Ayrton Senna. Please see Roland Ratzenberger. Please see Gilles Villeneuve. You can die in there. Okay, so we haven't had many of late. Shout out Antoine Huber. But you can die in there. So what motivation then has Lewis Hamilton at the age of 39, bearing in mind he'll be at Scuderia Ferrari next year, got to be risking his life in a dog of a car that could kill him? Snap oversteer to snap understeer. What are we talking about at Jeddah Corniche? Have you guys seen that track? Why would he? Why would he do that? Why would he be motivated to do that? Listen, and I, I don't like that Lewis Hamilton has taken his foot off the gas, but bear it in mind. Context is key always. You can die in F one. You do not play F one. So what's the incentivization for Lewis? To put himself in that car, that dog of a W15, when everybody else has made the wrong decisions, and now he has to take the downside impact of that and go and risk his life, go and belt up in a car that could kill. Why is he doing that for? Macon, I'm starting to think that Mercedes Benz C. Lewis is around finite period at Macon. Yeah, I don't think you're right. I think you answer something, but I'll get to that big evil. Do you not think Horner would have gone to Cass to complain about shit? Of course he would have. Of get he, he, Horner doesn't mess about. He he's not pulling any. But anyway, look, I'm getting off track. I digress. The third race happens, and again we're trying to have patience, and Lewis is trying to have patience desperately. You can see in his. In his being, in his countenance, desperately disappointed, but he's he's 
he's putting on his best face right until the third race and then again the promise of the w15 looks good it looks like it's achieved some performance right fp2 or fp3 it looks good qualifying comes round again and they are nowhere lewis doesn't even make it through to q3 lewis hamilton seven time champion Singapore 2018, 2007, nearly a rookie champion against Juan Fernando El Plan Alonso, two-time champion, who defeated and sent packing one Michael Schumacher. What are we talking about here? Like, how, how, how is this even a thing? Lewis is 39 years old. His time is a wasting. He's already lost two seasons in a Nuddy W13 and 14, respectively. And now this, a hat trick of Nuddy seasons. Of course, Lewis Hamilton's going to lose his mind. You can see him, he's desperately trying to hold it in. But ultimately, he's a champion. He's here to win 25 points every single race weekend. What else is he there for? What, to run around in 8th and ninth? Like, what, what are we doing here, Reed? Like, this is nonsense. F1 baloney. So Lewis's mask starts to slip. Every time he's in front of the press, you see him trying to smile, but he's struggling right Bit by bit, that smile, in terms of its diameter, is becoming less and less. Lewis Hamilton isn't enjoying himself. And ultimately, at the Australian Grand Prix, you get it from Lewis. He gives it to you. I'm not enjoying myself here. This car's the worst that I've ever driven, basically. As near as makes no difference. That's the quote. He's had enough. Check out what Toto Wolf had to say. So here's where I'm going to absolutely lose my mind. Because of this, this. This, that Toto Wolf is talking this way in 2024, with all the context in the mind, with it front and centre, that Lewis Hamilton is a seven-time champion, six-time in that Mercedes. This is what Toto Wolf had to say. You know what? Around Lewis Hamilton, I don't even think those red overalls will suit him. What are we... Go on then, Toto. Like, make this make sense. All this time I've been begging this type of skullduggery and sledging and trash talking. I've been begging for the past three years you to get out as Mercedes team principal front and centre and do that to the person and people that matter, right? Those protagonists, the rivals. How about you get out and say that about Christian Horner? How about you turn around your cap and get in the face of... How about you say something that antagonistic about some of the people with whom you are competing, Toto Wolf? How about that? No, you've saved it up and we've got a catch-up crawl of Toto Wolf antagonism. But this time, not aimed at Christian Horner, not aimed at Frederick Vasseur or, or James Allison. Not, or not even James Allison, bloody who's the other one now? Vowels. Not aimed at one of the other team principals, aimed at your driver, Sir Lewis Hamilton, because he's leaving now and going across the Ferrari. Are you kidding me, Toto Wolf? Make this make sense. And he didn't even stop there. He didn't stop there, did he? He then continued that Lewis next year is going to have to get used to the, the way our front, our, our rear wing looks. Because that's all he's going to see. Insinuation being next year Mercedes is going to have a good car and Ferrari are going to be nowhere. What are we? How does this even make sense? Have you been watching the races, Mr. Wolf? Have you seen that Ferrari have the best, if not the best, definitely the second best package on the grid? So why are we even here discussing this? This is nonsense. This cheeky chap has now come out, but the victim of that stance that renewed aggression from the team principal of Mercedes AMG Petronas is none other than his charge, Sir Lewis Hamilton. Can you imagine the rancor Lewis Hamilton reading through these quotes? Like what? All this time my team principal has been talking about the way that we win is more important than the winning in the first place. That sports etiquette is a thing and we want to be very noble and gentlemanly. And now when the sledging comes out, when it's time to talk cra trash even, I'm Lewis Hamilton. I'm the victim of that trash door. Not Christian Horner, not Vowles, not Frederick Vassar, not any of the other team. It's me that you're trash talking. 
I'm the guy that you should have given the ambassadorial role, the multi-year contract, given me a check and allowed me to write my numbers. After all that we've been through together, all the championships that we've won, the highs and the lows, the brand that we've developed, which will come on to, the brand that we've developed as Mercedes is me that you want to start trash talking. Cool. That makes zero sense. How very dare you, Toto? That's absolutely outrageous. I can't even, honestly, I can't square it in my mind. My very nutty racing mind. I don't know why Toto is all of a sudden turning heel. Turn heel, that's fine. If you're going to turn heel, turn heel. But turn heel on Christian and Max. Not not Lewis. I don't know. I, it, it's, the mind boggles. Really desperately non-rhetorical question. Why? Why? And Toto hasn't been like this hitherto, right? But I feel like he's going through. It's not. It's not a midlife crisis. Is it? It's fifty-two years old. Like it's a. It's an identity crisis, is what it is. I'm not sure who Toto's trying to be. It. it, it honestly, the mind boggles. All that stuff. I'm just like, well. If that's the way you feel, Toto, and you don't know who you are, and listen, here's the here's the reason why I say this. Let me get, let me give you that, guys. This Noir, you're an absolute legend. Going hard today, Noir. Scorched Earth, Cameron, and there it is. Cammy goes after his own driver. As I've said, Lewis has been disappointed by Merck, and even more Toto. Of course, the one. Why would he not at this point? And thank you so much, Noir. You're far too kind. But why would he not? After all that they've been through, table setting. All the championships, six for Lewis, one for Nico, eight constructors, all the highs and lows, 2021 going back and forth, the protests that they were going to do that didn't turn around. Like all of this, now is the time, Toto, of all times. Now, after bloody double DNF at Australia, wicked accident move drop. Now is the time when you're going to start talking smack about who? About Lewis. I don't know who, I, honestly, I don't know who Toto Wolf is, is anymore, I'll be honest with you. It's the love, that guy. How do you mean? But I don't know who he is. I don't think he knows who he is. After all of this talk, the modus operandi, winning isn't the most important thing. How we win, we wouldn't want to win a championship with an asterisk on it. That's Toto Wolf talking. So why now we, what, because Lewis is going across the Scuderia Ferrari, now it's the time to trash talk him. What? This doesn't make any sense. So I'll close with this. I'm not sure Toto Wolf knows who he is. On paper, face value, he's the 33% owner of Mercedes F1 in conjunction with Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineos. On paper. On paper, he's an eight-time constructors champion, team principal of that team. He is Mercedes and Mercedes he is him. They are synonyms of, of each other, surely. There is a symbiotic relationship in there, surely. But I'm not sure Toto really knows deep down who he is. Otherwise, he wouldn't be behaving this way and he wouldn't be saying these things. Is Toto Wolf the pioneer of which I talk? Or is he Ricky Gervais in the office? Like, I, I just don't know. Because some of these comments are more aligned with a Ricky Gervais figure, no? Like, that's not leadership qualities. Like, I, one of my old bosses will always say, when somebody leaves, make sure you treat them really well. Because people are already going to have their leaving date in their mind. And they're going to be thinking, well, if you treat Lewis like that, what happens to me when I leave? How are you going to treat me? They'll feel Lewis Hamilton's pain vicariously through him. That's not leadership. And so to close, look, Toto Wolf is a family man. You guys have seen Drive to Survive. A, fam a loving father, loving husband. He's a proper family man, a brilliant business mind, a billionaire at this stage, probably multiple times over. Props. I can't hate on Toto Wolf. But F1 is a business where what have you done for me lately matters. And what has Toto Wolf done for me lately? other than antagonise my driver and underperform periodically over the course of three years. 
Look, in Drive to Survive, there's a brilliant episode, Leaf of Faith, the one that talks about Lewis Hamilton Etta. And you see the pictures, the, the the video footage of him with his with his carting son, Jack, I think his name is, and loving wife, of course, Susie Wolf. Parlay that couple that keep that front and centre of your mind when you're hearing Toto Wolf again, the very latest tip bits from Toto with this. Because of the underperformance of recent races, the double DNF of at Australia. If you're going to call into question whether I should be the guy, says Toto Wolf, to lead Mercedes going forward as team principal, then then that's fair. Toto Wolf's words. Those are Toto Wolf's words. He's talked a gazillion times already about his future, and I'm not sure at this point it wouldn't be best for all concerned if he didn't take his leave. As successful as he's been, Every dynasty comes to its end, right? Father time is undefeated. Nothing lasts forever. And I don't want to, I don't want him to further sully his legacy. I'm being honest here. I don't know if Toto Wolf is the guy to take Mercedes through this transitional phase and lead them back to the promised land. I'll be honest. I just don't know. In fact, on the contrary, I don't think he is. Genuinely. You guys might know better than me. Let me know in the comments if you think Toto Wolf is that guy to take Mercedes back to the the promised land. Maybe is maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But you know what? For now, the prosecution rests. No further questions, Your Honour.